Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update. Monday, April 8th, around 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2024. Take a look at the GFS model for the Northwest. We could be experiencing a record snow event in Montana early next week. Keep calm. It's boom time. Total solar eclipse sweeps across North America and Armageddon didn't happen. In fact, it was a dud except for the eclipse itself. Millions of people witnessed totality in spectacular ways. I hope you either were part of it or watched the live stream. Now, there was one snafu. Eclipse flights swarmed airports. And they had to close the runways to park certain planes because these flights were getting $1,000 per seat, much more than any other flight there. So if they could care less about you actually trying to get somewhere. They were trying to make money, which isn't that funny because most of these people didn't get to see squat. So save your money, stay home and watch the live stream. Now, Oklahoma could see damaging winds, hail in the overnight storms, according to Coco, five chief meteorologist. He also says the tornado threat for Oklahoma is very low, but still exists. So heed the warnings. Now, a quick, oh, let's get to that in just a minute. We have more severe weather threats here continuing into Tuesday. Heavy rainfall possible across North Texas with some thunderstorms. We're going to get to that forecast in just a moment. But before we do, let's take a look at the maps showing where trillions of cicadas will emerge in the U.S. this spring, ding, ding, in a very rare hatching. Uh, this is the first time in 221 years that the 13-year brood and the 17-year brood will both emerge at the same time, and they will be coming in mass. Here we see brood 13, and here we see brood 14. Oh, oh, no, that's brood 19. Holy macaroni. So both of these broods will be emerging at the same time. The only place you'll get mixing is in central Illinois, perhaps in parts of eastern Iowa, specifically southeastern Iowa, but not many regions will you get a double brood. So I don't know what all the hype is about these cicadas. They emerge all the time, and, well, mostly no one cares, except the kids that collect their little shells. On to the weather forecast. Severe weather across the south may impede solar eclipse viewing, and it did for many. In fact, the first half of the United States from Texas let's say just towards the edge of Arkansas, had some pretty significant cloud cover. It was slightly clearer as it rapidly moved through Indiana and up through the Great Lakes here, and then it became spectacularly clear for the exit out into Canada. Now, as far as the weather is concerned, multiple rounds of severe thunderstorms are likely to develop this afternoon through tonight from the southern plains into the Mississippi Delta region. The main threats will likely be very large hail, damaging winds, heavy rainfall, and a few small tornadoes. Increasing cloud cover across these areas may limit the viewing of the highly anticipated eclipse as it has like we suggested. Now here is that weather continuously developing currently. Now here you see in just three hours, the severe threat really picks up overnight here through Arkansas and Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, exploding over Arkansas in six hours, nine hours, 12 hours. It may shift all the way west towards New Mexico as the severe weather threat continues Wednesday into Thursday. Take a look at it blowing, over, blowing up over the southeast there. Many could be some significant effects. Take a look at this. This is Thursday. I think that's going to be a bad day through Friday as a flooding threat bombs out over the east for the weekend. Here is Friday, Saturday. Sunday should be a fun day. Could be some flooding in the mountains with all that snow. Major rivers will swell as more snow and rain. Hey, hey. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. He says it's all rain. It's spring. Ding, ding. 
Al Gore is a fraud, by the way. Now, as this major system causes flooding in the Northeast at the beginning of the weekend, by Sunday, another system will move into the West, and that is the setup for this major storm that will develop over Montana here. Take a look early next week and bring some record snow totals. Let's quick take a look at those. We'll walk it through. Here is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Not much happening except for Washington State, a little bit up north there in Idaho and western Montana. And we'll move the week through here Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You can see a little bit of residual snow and mostly flooding rain for most of the northeast. And then that system moves into the west, bringing snow to the Sierras, some of the high elevation in the Rockies, and then bombing out up north here in Canada and Montana. Uh, and that should be fun. That's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday that will extend maybe all the way into the weekend. Friday, Saturday, a five-day storm for Montana could be six feet of snow for some regions that haven't seen that much snow all winter. So we're keeping a close eye on this as it develops, as it could be quite significant on its impacts. Now, we do have some good news. Major U.S. lake expected to completely fill after years of historic drought and climate change fear-mongering. We're feeling very good, and, well, so are we over here at the channel. California's largest reservoir is expected to reach its maximum capacity this year to likely reach a full or nearly full level for the second consecutive time following several years of historically low levels and fear-mongering. In fact, we're talking about Lake Shasta, which rose 12 feet from March 1st to the 26th and just needs another 17 feet to reach full pool. Let's talk about some of the other large lakes that fear mongers have been fearing about for the last three years. First, we'll take a look at Lake Powell. Take a look at this. Alien Allen knows about Lake Powell. He used to live on it. And Lake Powell is, in fact, 30 feet above last year's levels. After they told us last year it was going to dry up, it is now 30 feet higher, and they are a liar. And also a liar is the Lake Mead data where they were fear-mongering Lake Mead was going to dry up. It is now at five-year averages. It is above the 2022 and 2023 levels, approaching 2021, and is looking quite sharp, being 30 feet above last year's levels as well. Nothing but fear. They have no idea what's going on with the weather. And we report on it and we just shove it right in their face. What a disgrace. Seismic update. No quakes of note. Track quake down here in White City where they just pump the toxic waste deep into the aquifer. Overall, no quakes of note. Biggest quake, a six magnitude in Indonesia at 10 kilometers. Probably felt by very few as it was offshore. So good news on the seismic front. Quick look at Worldwide Volcano News. Reykjanes Volcano Update. Abundant lava overflow from the main single crater that is now active, which was followed by elevated influx of magma. So that will continue for a day or so, maybe more. A beko to 11,000 feet today. And take a look, Fernandina Volcano in the Galapagos has finally reached the ocean. And bad news, there's lots of steam and toxic gases coming from that. Luckily, no one lives on the island. Liwotolo, Indonesia, outpouring lava flow on the southern slope, as you can see here from Sentinel. Fuego to 16,000 feet. Etna continues puffing and passing those Steam rings, they're not smoke rings, they're steam rings. And take a look at the array of rings today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Schleville, Schlevazel. <whistles> you all remember that show. Space weather for April 9th. Two sunspots visible from this distance. No activity for the last 48 hours. Completely silent at so-called... Solar Max, three-day geomagnetic forecast, all calm, dropping down to K2 uh, by April 11th. I love it when a plan comes together, and we're right, including 
the prediction of the weakest solar cycle in 200 years, which we're experiencing. And yet there is not a single article from the mainstream people that said this is going to be a big solar cycle and there is no grand solar minimum. I'd like to hear what Ben Davidson has to say. He refuses, uh, he refuses to debate us in public because he is a fraud, not a scientist, and a coward, period. Why NASA is launching rockets into the solar eclipse path. Well, in case you didn't know, some of the most important nonsense scientific breakthroughs came from eclipses. In fact, take a look at this. One of the most famous scientific milestones connected to an eclipse occurred May 29th, 1919. When a total solar eclipse provided evidence for Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity, which has deceived the entire world and everyone believes E equals MC squared. So, eclipses are full of shit, period. Just like the media, remember how scared they were? The end of the world, it's all a oh, state of emergency. Guess what happened today? Nothing but a shadow and a drop in temperature of 8 to 12 degrees. NASA spots objects speeding around the moon and thousands of idiots hit the internet and claim it's aliens. There you can see the object. The only problem is it is um, Korea's Pathfinder Lunar Orbiter, the KPLO, and not, in fact, an alien spacecraft which you could have figured out in about two seconds if you just Googled objects moving around the moon. But conspiracy theorists and dumb people that believe in aliens and Nibiru don't have time to actually fact check. There is a planetary crisis that's being unveiled in salacious headlines all across the interwebs and mainstream media. Shockingly little research on major threats to Earth are actually happening while all the propaganda on the fake news like sea level rise and boiling temperatures, they really hit the heart of all of those headlines, don't they? What we are lacking is any real scientific information about pandemics, solar minimum, grand solar minimum, magnetic reversals, and everything that's happening right now before your very lives. That's how stupid we are as humanity. We've got 8 billion idiots on earth running around researching nothing important and scaring you to the bejesus about nothing that's actually happening. Here is how stupid earth is. This is one of the most watched shows on earth called The View. It should be called The Stupidity Project. But the hosts on The View today link the solar eclipse, the cicada bloom, and earthquakes all to climate change. Take a look at these idiots. Leaving, we've got a solar eclipse. Uh, we've got she the earthquake. The she ran down the hallway. The and rapture then, is here. The rapture's here. And then also I learned that the cicadas are coming. Cicadas. Cicadas. Although I love for the, the first time in cicada, like cicada. No, 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 Two That's, different, no, two, no, well, they, this is what I read. There's two, two, different, there's times two are, different kinds of cicadas Yes, two different times, times are coming. The good cicadas but, and the bad cicadas. But no. for the first time in, in many, many years. No, seven, so, every seven. 17 years this happens. Well, that's not what I read, but maybe, <laughs> but, you know, maybe well, you know better. I, but in I a way, say all those, all those things together would maybe lead one to believe that, you know, either climate change exists that's or, more or something point. is really or going earth is on. returning. Earthquakes are not at the mercy of climate change. It's underground. No. It can't, I don't it, think it, that's... It happens... Um, Holy macaroni, can you believe how stupid the entire staff is here? Idiota or idiot, it doesn't matter. Cicada, cicada, it's all semantics. Unless you're looking for actual information, which in fact the view has none of. They have nothing but talking points of propaganda. And Whoopi was right where, yeah, a certain brood emerges every 17 years, but they just are clueless in general about general facts. They don't do any research. They could care less. They listen to all the talking points on Joe Biden, on the mainstream media, and they just repeat them and puppet them. 
for views because that is the title of the show, The View. You want to know real facts, that's why you're here. You want to know information about science. You want to know information about health and wellness and survivability of the future. Well, how about the seven enticing health benefits of chia seeds? Yeah, they're the bomb. Leah's been eating them every night with little blueberries. They may help insomnia, for goodness sakes. Chia seeds contain so many nutritive benefits, including antioxidants, minerals, fiber, omega-3 fatty acids, which prevent strokes in 99% of humans. And these nutrients all play a role in supporting multiple body functions and systems. And the good news is that chia, highly nutritious chia, organic highly nutritious chia is quite inexpensive in bulk. So you could buy a $20 bag and live off it for the next six months. Low in calories, high in protein, high in fat, high in alpha linoleic acid, low in carbs, super high in fiber, literally negating the carbs completely, 14% daily value of calcium in just a cup or so, 12% of iron, 23% magnesium, 20% phosphorus, 12% zinc, and two essential B vitamins, 15% of thiamine, 16% of niacin. Chia may be one of the most easy ways to hack your health. It's loaded with antioxidants. It may support weight loss. It may lower your risk of heart disease. And interestingly enough, it contains many bone nutrients. It also may reduce blood sugar levels. Are you pre-diabetic? Eat some chia and tell the doctor to suck it. Easy to incorporate in your diet. It's delicious, easy to make. There are tons of recipes and go get it. I'll put it in the store, leave a link below. Be safe. And one more thing. If you want to be healthy, wealthy, and wise in the future, come get your heirloom, open-pollinated, non-GMO seeds from the Alliance of Native Seed Keepers, our affiliate, where you can still get 237 varieties of open-pollinated, non-GMO, organic seeds from the Alliance for the cheapest price on the internet, just $2 per pack. Put in coupon code ORP2024 for an additional 10% off and free shipping if you hit that $25 mark. And that's a boom to knowledge and survivability and sustainability. Please share this video as we are shadow banned. We need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do and watch all of our podcasts in one place commercial free. Be safe. The world didn't end with an eclipse, but it will end with stupidity. And that's a boom. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Go get the seeds and we'll see you on the next one. Yeah.